Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. <clears throat> Today we're actually uh, putting in the uh, fence. This is in uh, Cochise County, Arizona. It's a grazing project that I've uh, been working on for a few days. We've already got the water line in. I'm walking on the water line right here. There's an inch and a half uh, polyethylene 500 foot rolls in here. And uh, we've got quick couplers every 500 feet right up there by the four wheeler you can see that orange flag um <clears throat> that's a that's a marker <clears throat> for a water point but what we did is we came out here yesterday and strung this wire actually it was the day before we strung this wire and we were gonna lay out these posts yesterday morning we came out here and the wire we got about right in here like man that wire is loose must have come loose. I knew it didn't come loose because I tied it in a heck of a good slip knot up there. And uh, anyway, got to look and there's all these tracks in this freshly uh, trenched soil. And then we started to see in this. <laughs> that is a javelina. Javelina dung. And a javelina had come along here. And I guess he stumbled onto that poly braid. And he decided to have himself a poly braid sandwich. And it was the cleanest little nip you've ever seen, though. It looked like you took a pair of uh, side cutters, wire cutters, and just clipped it. He didn't chew on it, other than he just chewed it in two. And a lot of times, cattle on an unenergized wire, if they get a hold of that, they'll chew and chew and chew, and they'll end up with a piece of that the size of a softball. It's, just, it's all wound up in a ball. And I don't know what it is, but sometimes cattle, and I've seen sheep do it too. They just like chewing on it. I don't know if it feels good in their mouth or what, but anyway, the javelina, it didn't do that. So this morning, I didn't leave the wire out. <laughs> we, we learned our lesson. We just stretched this wire. All the posts were placed yesterday on 25-foot centers. And uh, I've got a couple guys behind me here. we got the water truck coming, and that water truck... You can see it down there. It's got an 800 gallon tank on it, and that's the water that's going into that water pick. And uh, we've got a steel pipe that you hold on top of the ground, and it's shooting water out in a spray. I mean, it's, well, you've seen water picks, like power sprayers you spray your house with? Well, that's what this is. It's like a power sprayer coming out of a steel pipe. So it's very durable, it's got handles on it. And as I get closer down here, you're not going to be able to hear me. So I'm just going to walk down in there and I'll let you look at them, put one in. And then I'll, I'll back out of there. But, uh, man, you talk about some beautiful country. There's Mexico right over there. If you look real close, probably can't see it on this video, but the border wall is over there. About five miles from us. And, uh... On this side over here, there is a, uh, I didn't know what this was up in the air. <laughs> I thought, what's that white thing? It's a big old gondola. I don't know if the video, you can see it over there. There's a big old white balloon over there. And uh, <clears throat> there's a radar on that. And that radar is checking for low flying planes coming across the border to, t to escape our you know satellites that pick them up that the, the uh, people that are running drugs and so that that balloon right there gets them they're not going to be able to come in with that thing hanging up over there um and so that's something that i think they've had that uh, it's been in use quite a while i don't know back in the 80s maybe but it uh it just that's what it is it's to detect low flying planes that are way below I guess, you know, standard flight heights. But, uh, yeah, so we, 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 we stretched this poly braid. That's our straight line. So if you were a carpenter, you'd look at that. Okay, that's your chalk line. Okay. So you snap that on a piece of board and it leaves a piece of chalk line. That's, that's where you would cut your board at. Well, here we're using it to drive our post. You know, it, it's pretty close. I mean, we're not going to get it like you took a laser and laid it out. Although this this water line, before we started, folks, 
they had a surveyor crew come out here and actually put these markers up so we know exactly where the center of the farm is. Boy, you talk about saving a ton of time. They flagged it every 500 feet. They put flags in. So we were able to take the trencher, say, follow the flags, and you'll be good. So here's the motor right here. Okay. There's the tank. There's the water hose. Here it is. So Grant's using an up and down motion. He's got that one pretty darn close. There it is. And then Stephen comes along with the post. We've got the post marked. There it is. Boy, that's a good one, Stephen. That one's a perfect one. It's right angle to your fence. Absolutely. So now what they're doing there is putting in a steel post next to our quick coupler. And this is going to be permanent, so that steel post will stay there. And uh, Jan and Karen are coming along behind, and they're going to spray paint those. So you can see them from a long distance. I think they're spray painting them orange. And so you know when you see one of those orange posts, you've got water right there. Now, we haven't got the PVC caps yet that will have a six inch permanent cap placed over it. And inside there is that quick coupler you just plug into and you got instant water. It works just like an air hose. You plug it in, you got air. Unhook it, you don't have air. It's that simple. Boy, I mean, they're getting along quick here. I've got to get up there in front of them and stretch the next piece of wire. We're, we're going toward that mountain range up there in the foreground. And there's actually a, a kind of a smaller subdivision up there and uh, on down that mountain range over here is uh, Sierra Vista that's the closest big town and uh, that's actually where we're staying there's it's big enough it's got some places to eat and hotel accommodations and uh, just super pleasant people out here it's just an awesome place to come and work of course the weather could have been a little cooler I wouldn't have minded that but you know, in farming, you take what you get. And today, it's a beautiful day. We're in the high 70s. I think they said the day's going to be a high of 89. Uh, all last week, we, we hit hundreds every day. And uh, they said, well, there's no humidity. It's not hot. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was hot. It might have not had any humidity, but it was still hot. And uh, the first day out, we had a tent that we could sit under to eat our lunch, keep the sun off of us. The rest of the time we had to sit out in the sun and eat our lunch. A um, couple of days we did go to a little small restaurant here just to get out of the wind. Today there is no wind. But yesterday and the day before and the day before that there was 40 mile an hour winds. And uh, I was eating my lunch and it actually blew my lettuce out of my sandwich. That's how hard the wind was. And the lettuce hit the ground and it was about... 30 big old ants grabbed a hold and took off with my lettuce. And I'm like, well, I guess I won't have lettuce on my sandwich today. <laughs> There's everything out here. We saw a horny toad yesterday. Great big one. And even the locals go, oh my, they don't, they don't get that big normally. Well, this is a big one. And uh, we've seen uh, tons and tons of birds. Hawks. Uh, they've got crows out here twice to three times the size of our crows some buzzards uh, there's little lizards uh, all kinds of ants they don't have fire ants but they got these ants right here look at that so they're, they're carrying stuff down in that hole and these ant holes are all over the place but they're, these are very friendly ants they don't mess with you too much and then here is the termites See all those castings? So they actually cover, they cover what they're gonna go after in dirt, this casting, they go inside their home and they eat all that. Look at that. I mean, there's termites and that's what that is. The termites are everywhere out here. And I was asking somebody about their homes, did they have to spray them every week or every month? He goes, no, no, termites aren't too bad on the homes, but Boy, they sure are out here. And uh, here we got another water truck coming in. That's going to fill up. 
we've only got about 300 gallons left in our other one so that ought to finish it right there we're going to pump that water into our big tank so we're going to have plenty of water this is actually going really quick i'm the other day we drilled some of those holes with that water jet and we'd hit a rock and i think our record was eight tries we had to re re we had to move that pipe around that he's holding on to eight times to get one one post in the ground <laughs> but you know uh, once we got past that area it actually picked up pretty quick and it went a lot quicker but when you hit rock you're not going to shoot a water jet through a rock you got to pick it up and move but isn't that making a good looking fence look at that you can see them all the way down through there and that's what i love about these uh, timeless posts uh, this is the inch and three quarter model okay they're an inch and three quarter shaped just like a t-post and he's actually using a sledgehammer just to give him the final tap into the ground and uh we're having a wire on these that top one is 32 inches right there and then we come down at the uh, 16 inch level right there so we've got uh, one two three four five six there's eight holes in there that you have to pick from okay once we get all these driven that poly braid will be rolled up and then we pull a poly, um, we pull our high tensile 180,000 psi hot wire all the way through from that end where we have our corner post all the way toward that mountain range up here. This is a long piece. It's a 4,000 feet long. So there's a lot of posts laid out down through there. Uh, it's going really quick though. We're going to be there probably in three hours. Uh, I would guess around three hours. It just takes a little while. You can't go out there like a steel post driver and slap these in the ground. And uh, we had a guy come with a pneumatic driver. And he looked at me and he said, well, son, I can drive anything with this. I mean, this pneumatic driver weighed 75 pounds. And it was hooked to this great big old engine. He fired it up. He set it on that post. And I'm like, boy, this, this, this could get ugly real quick. He hit that post with that driver. And, da -da 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 -da. and I mean, that post started bouncing. He went flying around. I'm like, stop! <laughs> You're going to get somebody hurt. I mean, it was that it was that hard. And so we knew then we had to use the water jet. And that's working just awesome. So that's what we got. We got the water jet. We've got a sledgehammer. Just a little, when I say sledgehammer, it's a five-pound hammer. And with that hole like that pre-drilled with water, you don't have to hit it very hard. See, he's not he's not tearing up the top of that post at all but uh, if you're gonna build fence you want to get it done quick timeless fence posts I highly recommend them uh, go to their website uh, check out timeless fence if you want to get a, a post that's gonna last you a lifetime these do have uh, the 20-year warranty on the surface finish they're pre-drilled they're already got a coating on them so you don't have to worry about the UV on them and here's the best part you're helping keep these recycled this is recycled vinyl windows they're not ended up in landfills they're out here on the land a useful purpose to manage animals keep them where you need them and folks you don't have to replace them fiberglass you better be out there painting that stuff about every 10 to 15 years if you don't paint fiberglass it will fray out and uh it's it's just a nasty stuff to deal with when it's got all that fiberglass exposed on it so with these you don't have that um, these are the uh, four and a half footers and they, they're an uh, inch and I said an inch and three quarter earlier I was wrong they're an inch and a half awful good looking post though what I like about them is see how, how much they flex mm. I mean they flex tremendous and uh, so we're we're tickled that we've got these because we're, we're putting up a lot of fence and I don't have time to be out here drilling drilling and painting posts so we're getting this put in and uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. We've got a few more posts to drive, and then we're going to be running some wire, some high tensile wire on this 4,000 foot section. And then we got some more water line to put in. We got the trencher over there uh, going on a new section, and we'll have that ready here before long. So, everyone, hit that subscribe button on the way out and that like. I'd appreciate it. We'll see y'all down the road. It's pretty cool, though. You sit there, no matter where you move it, it automatically. Oh, it stays straight? It stays straight. So, anybody's got um, a gyro. It's kind of, it's got a gyro in it. Okay. But it's not called that. It's called Does your have that? Or is this just a bowl? It's just a bowl. Yeah. Anyway, I've got two of them. And, um...
I had to take all this off oh. to get it on there because it was too heavy with this on it. Oh yeah. And then I started tearing my phone up and I'm like, yeah, keep dropping it. Yeah. That's what did.